Hello, radio friends. I'm Mike, Kilo Echo Zero, Victor, India Mike. This is the Traveling Ham. We are camped today on the Ho River, right on the Ho River. We're just on the doorstep of Olympic National Park on the Olympic Peninsula in Northwest Washington State. I'll show you the campsite here. to have a little conversation based on a really great Facebook post I was following on the POTA group about surrounding terrain and invis antennas and invis propagation. Two different aspects uh, I want to discuss I think is good information for anyone doing portable ops on a regular basis. First, I want to discuss this concept of invis, near vertical incident skywave. And the point I want to make is INVIS is a form of radio propagation, of HF radio propagation, where we send signals at a near vertical angle up into the ionosphere at a low enough frequency that the ionosphere has the ability to totally turn that around and come back down. If it's too high, if your frequency is too high, your signal is just going to shoot right through and ain't nobody gonna hear it. But the key point is that INVIS is a mode of propagation. It is not a type of antenna. And I've fallen guilty to this myself in saying that I'm running 20 meter INVIS or I'm running, I'm doing this activation on an INVIS antenna. And I've decided I don't wanna call them INVIS antennas anymore because that antenna that you have optimized for Invis use can still do other things. And people get too locked into this notion that if I set up an Invis antenna and I've got mountains around me, all I'm gonna be able to do is talk with people around me. And that's not true. And you are limiting your portable operations too much with that line of thinking. So I picked up this idea uh, from Andre. He's an Alaskan operator, KL7AC. Andre posted a couple times on the Poto Facebook page about operating CW down in the bottom of Grand Canyon. Since I was planning on doing the same thing, I was paying close attention. I can't remember if he brought it up or if I asked him, but he was running an antenna optimized for near vertical incident skywave, but he used 20 meters. Now there's a lot of confusion and conversation and you can see it on this Facebook post I say, people will come in and say, well, you can't use 20 meters on INVIS. It doesn't work. It can't, it can't work. And, and this is where I want to clarify, INVIS is a mode of propagation, not a type of antenna. That antenna that you have strung up really low, like any horizontal wire that we put up out, out in the field for 20 and 40 meters is probably configured for INVIS, right? It's, it's, we're not getting it up, you know, 60 feet up in the air, 30, 60 feet up in the air that we would need to to get that full half wave height. And I think because we refer to these antennas as invis antennas, people picture like a vertical beam coming out from this antenna, going up in the sky and coming back down and, and nothing else going on. You know, the true invis propagation is like a 70 degree angle and, and up, you know, near vertical, just like, just like the name implies. But in fact, that antenna is optimized for anything about 30 degrees and higher. So there's a lot of angle, there's a lot of angle of departure that's not utilized for near vertical incident skywave that can be very useful for you if you're operating uh, in the valley with mountains all around you or in the bottom of a deep canyon for those of you that would be crazy enough to try such a thing. Next time you're in a mountainous site, develop the habit of measuring the angle of departure you need to clear that mountain. The way I do it is I use the fisting method. No, no, don't leave me, hang on. So the, the height of your fist tends to be about 10 degrees, all right? This is an in the field approximation. So I'll hold one fist right at my eye level where the horizon would be. It's hard to tell because I've got a steep bank right here next to me. But if I hold one fist right at eye level, and let's just stack nine fists on that and see how close I am to straight up. There's one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pretty darn close to straight up over my head. So one fist is 10 degrees. And you will find, I think, that even the tallest mountains near you would only be about 10, 20, 30 degrees up. And that's a pretty steep departure angle. That's a nearby tall mountain, other than it, just a really rare extreme situation. Okay, when I'm at the bottom of Grand Canyon, I'm talking about 30 or 35 degrees of angle to get up over these bluffs uh, that, are, that are obviously nearby and about 4,500 feet higher than my location right by the river. So this antenna that's not an Invis antenna, that's strung up, you know, a horizontal wire, lower than a half wavelength, let's say, let's say a quarter wavelength and lower, is now optimized for anything 30 degrees and over, which means on higher frequencies, this antenna is optimized now for hopping over these mountains. So anytime you've got tall mountains nearby, you can get over them with, I need to, I keep wanting to call it an invis antenna. <laughs> with this with this quarter wave or less high antenna. What do we want to call it? Like a, a low hung horizontal wire? I don't know. It needs a different name. If you can think of one or an acronym, put it in the comments. But when you hang your wire at a quarter wavelength height or lower, you've got a lot more than an invis antenna. You've got an antenna that's optimized to hop over any nearby terrain that you have by you and can be a fantastic weapon uh, for activating a lot of a lot of our parks and a lot of the places that we can easily get to are down in the valleys so You know because we call it or because a lot of us refer to it as an invis antenna I see a lot of folks in these online conversations really letting their minds get roped into the idea that I'm just gonna be able to do invis and that's it so I've got to stay at uh, you know, seven megahertz and lower, so I can just talk to people around me. And when you're out here, out west, where a lot of mountains are, you're not gonna have enough population near you to be able to activate a park with that type of propagation. You need to reach out a little bit farther to reach more hunters. You need those lower frequencies that don't work on NVIS propagation, but they do work with an antenna that is optimized for NVIS propagation. I hope that difference is 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 coming through. So you're you're using utilizing all those angles from 30 degrees up to 70 degrees to get your signal out over the mountains and out at a significant distance. So uh, my first operation at the bottom of Grand Canyon, I got contacts over 2000 miles. Okay, obviously those aren't, you know, invis contacts they're far enough away there's this is some regular sky wave propagation and in some cases they were going up you know if the if the canyon is running this way there i'm getting i got one of those contacts to alaska up in this direction over a nearby bluff like not even taking advantage of the of the alignment of the canyon i'm just jumping right over the canyon walls from where i am right down the colorado river so this is a weapon i hope you can put in your arsenal for such a situation. Not an invis antenna, a low hung horizontal wire and run some higher frequencies on it. I haven't tried anything higher than 14 megahertz, but it'd be interesting to try 18 megahertz and 21 uh, to see if it can work. Actually, I did run some 15 meter on my second operation in the canyon. I can't recall how many contacts I made on that. I'll look that up and, uh, and annotate it here. I just don't I don't recall off the top of my head. I know I didn't do any uh, 17 meter, but I, my recollection is I did try some 15. But have that weapon in your arsenal, and I credit Andre KL7AC for presenting that idea to me that I now have tried and pass on to you. Here's the second aspect of this conversation that I wanna have with you, and, and the two are, are kinda related, but I think all of us in the HF portable world, all of us collectively overemphasize the importance of surrounding terrain, at least in terms of your signal being able to escape, you know, a, a bowl or a valley that you might happen to be operating in. And there's been a number of situations where uh, I showed up to a site and I'm like, oh man, this is going to be tough to get out of, you know, and, and there was even one uh, up in South Park, Colorado, where... You know, I had I had decent mountains around fairly nearby 
and I had left my infant half wave antenna. I didn't bring it out that morning. I accidentally left that one back at the RV and all I had was my vertical antenna. I figured I was screwed. It worked just fine. We overemphasize the importance of terrain, at least in terms of our signal escaping and getting out to the ionosphere. For one, there's, there's some sort of phenomenon in the human brain. When we see a mountain, we imagine it taller than it is. If you don't believe me, take a picture of a mountain sometime and look at your picture. The mountains look dinky. And, and when you use that fist method and start stacking your fists and, and measure the, the angle to go, get over those mountains, uh, it'll actually be kind of depressing how low they are. They're high enough to affect your VHF, UHF operations. They are high enough to affect your DX operations, which, you know, those signals will be coming in at a fairly low angle. But for your typical POTA, SOTA, portable operation contacts, or I'm looking at regional contacts, I'm looking at contacts within my own continent, 99.9% .9 of the terrain that you're gonna experience will have no impact on those contacts. Okay, let me see if I can recall some of these uh, operations that I've had uh, uh, in the past. There was Sky Pond, okay, where I hike up to one of these uh, alpine ponds, you know, just below the peaks. The, the, the very peaks of these, of these Rocky Mountains are, are a thousand feet above my head and in a ring all the way around me. That's why, uh, that's why a pond is formed there. And I'm still able to get out and make SSB contacts with my low hung horizontal wire on 20 meters. And I think in that, in, in that video, I, I actually called it a 20 meter invis contact. So I added some of that confusion myself. Now, before I made those contacts on SSB, I was having pretty poor luck on uh, running CW from that same location. And I think a couple things are going on there. One, there just weren't as many Morse code operators active as there were SSB. Some F-16s flying over. <gasps> There's just not as many Morse code operators, CW operators working and it was also midsummer. We got summertime propagation. You know, I think that I think that causes a little bit of this phenomena where we are overemphasizing the effect on these mountains. We're getting in mountainous areas to activate mostly in the summertime when propagation is poor. And if you guys could keep it down a little bit, that'd really help me out. But we're, you know, we're in valleys and in mountains, activating parks at times when the propagation is really poor, the summer doldrums, and that's what we're associating it with, the mountains, not the propagation. Uh, there were obviously two activations down in Grand Canyon itself, right on the Colorado River. I'm as close to the, I was as close to the Colorado River as I am to the Ho River uh, today by Olympic National Park. And in one case, even ran a vertical antenna and I made 90 some contacts with that vertical antenna, 4,400 feet down. Are there any others? What are the others? Uh, there was the, the activation I mentioned in South Park where I had left my in-fed half wave unintentionally at the RV. I was stuck using a vertical antenna. Uh, that was summertime propagation issue there uh, some too. So I didn't make a whole lot of contacts, but I did get that operation done the park activated within a reasonable amount of time. All right, so let's wrap this up. It's not an invis antenna, it's invis propagation. Perhaps the antenna needs a different, a different name, a low hung horizontal wire. I don't know, that kind of sucks, something like that. You can make contacts on higher, on frequencies higher than seven megahertz, on bands higher than 40 meters, by taking advantage of that antenna's pretty good capabilities between 30 and 70 degrees angle of departure. And when you do that, you will realize how much that we, <laughs> and I include myself in this group very intentionally, I say we very intentionally, you will realize how we have been overemphasizing the effect that surrounding terrain, hills, mountains, canyons, valleys, how much impact these have on our 
continental contacts, our, our, our regional and continental contacts. So get out there and activate that park you have stayed away from because of its terrain. Maybe more in the September-ish time range when summer propagation is a little bit better. Go out there, hang up a horizontal wire lower than a quarter wavelength. Don't call it an, in an invis antenna and try those higher frequencies to get out of that location and activate that park that you didn't think you'd be able to activate. I'm Mike, Kilo Echo Zero, Victor India Mike. This is the Traveling Ham. We'll see you next time.